Greetings, everyone. Learning as a hobby here. Uh, I want to go over uh, the next section in in Tau. So we're going to do the summary, my summary for section five point four in Tau's analysis one book. So let me bring up my my notes, and we'll go over them. Okay. In this section, we're going to talk about the order properties of the real numbers. So uh, we start out by you know, saying we would like R to satisfy the trichotomy law. Um, and our first guess uh, for, you know, you know, defining things in a way where we could do that um, is we, you know, we might say a real number X equals limit AN is positive if all the AN are positive and negative if, if all the AN are negative and zero if uh, all the AN are zero, uh, just, you know, in a naive sense. Uh, however, this leads to problems, which Tau illustrates with a couple examples. So for example, the sequence 10 to the minus n and going from one to infinity has 10 to the minus n greater than zero for all n greater than or equal to one. However, notice that the limit of that sequence is the real number zero. <clears throat> and then uh, we also have the sequence below it, negative 10 to the negative n. Notice that all those terms are negative. Uh, for all n greater than or equal to one, but again, the limit is zero, not something negative. So we we have some some technicalities that we have to iron out before we can, uh, you know, look at the order uh, of you know what, it, what when we define like what a positive real number is, a negative real number, and so on. So uh, here's our definition: five point four point one. Let a n n going from one to infinity be a sequence of rationals. We say that this sequence is positively bounded away from zero if and only if we have a positive rational c greater than greater than zero, such that a n is greater than or equal to c for all n greater than or equal to one. And the sequence is uh, uh, the sequence is negatively bounded away from zero if and only if we have a negative rational negative c less than zero, such that a n is less than or equal to negative c for all n greater than or equal to one. And then he gives some examples that satisfy those uh, definitions. So for example, uh, in the first sequence here, 1.1, 1.01, 1.001, et cetera, et cetera. This is a sequence that is positively bounded away from zero since an is greater than or equal to one for all n greater than or equal to one. In example two, uh, we, ha we have this sequence, negative 1.1, negative 1.01, et cetera, et cetera. Notice that the sequence is negatively bounded away from zero. And then he gives an example that is neither positive nor negatively bounded away from zero, which is this one here, even though it is, it is a bounded sequence. Uh, one, negative one, one, negative one, dot, 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 is bounded away from zero, but it is neither positively bounded away from zero nor negatively bounded away from zero. All right, so we're going to use this notion of uh, you know sequences, Cauchy sequences that are positively bounded away from zero or negatively bounded away from zero to define positive or negative real numbers. So here's definition 5.4.3. A real number x is said to be positive if and only if it can be written as x equals lim a n for some Cauchy sequence a n which is positively bounded away from zero. X is said to be negative, you know, the, the definition you would expect. We say that X is negative if and only if it can be written as X equals lim a n for some Cauchy sequence a n, which is negatively bounded away from zero. All right, and then we get our first proposition in this section, uh, basic properties of positive reals. For every real number x, exactly one of the following three statements is true. So we get trichotomy. Uh, either x is 0, x is positive, or x is negative. Uh, also, a real number x is negative, if and only if negative x is positive. And then also we get these two properties. If x and y are positive, then so are x plus y, and so are, and so is uh, x times y. Uh, however, we'll prove this in the exercise set, so I'll skip the proof here in the summary. All right, uh, another definition. So we need to know, now that we have uh, the definition of positive and negative, now we have have the, the concept of absolute value of a real number, uh, which is definition 5.4.5. Let x be a real number. We define absolute value, absolute value x of x to equal x if x is positive, negative x if x is negative, and zero when x is zero. So nothing, you know, nothing new, but uh, we need to do that definition. And then we also have a definition for the ordering of the real numbers. 
uh, let X and Y be real numbers. We say that X is greater than Y and write X greater than Y if and only if X minus Y is positive, sorry, is a positive real number and X less than Y if and only if X minus Y is a negative real number. And finally, uh, we define X greater than or equal to Y if and only if X is greater than Y or X equals Y and similar definition for X less than or equal to Y. All right, uh, we have another proposition here, 5.4.7. All the claims in Proposition 4.2.9, which held for rationals, continue to hold for real numbers. Let me remind you of what that proposition is, because we did that a little while ago. Uh, that's this one here, which are the order properties uh, for the rationals. So what that theorem is saying is that all these same properties hold for the real numbers. Okay, and we'll we'll hold off on proving that until the exercise set as well. So we'll just accept it for now. All right, pro next proposition, 5.4.8. Let X be a positive real number, then X inverse is also positive. Also, if Y is another positive number and X is greater than Y, then X inverse is less than Y inverse. And this one we'll prove here. Um, so uh, my proof that I did here is uh, slightly different from Tau's proof. Uh, but it, you know, it's using my my proof just uses the the definitions directly. But anyway, here's here's my proof. Uh, let x be a positive real number, then x equals lim a n, where a n is a Cauchy sequence that is positively bounded away from zero. Then there are positive rationals c and m such that c less than equal a n less than e equal m for all n greater than or equal to one. Um, that's because of the fact that the a n are uh, rational numbers and uh, An is a uh, Cauchy sequence, so it's bound. We we already know that Cauchy sequences are bounded, so in in particular the Ans are bounded above. And because it's a, a positive real number, that we know that there's some rational positive rational number C that is uh, less than or equal to every An for n greater than or equal to one. Just just you know by the definitions and everything. And also we proved that Cauchy sequences are bounded in a previous section. So um, okay, then one over C greater than or equal to one over An greater than or equal to one over m for all n greater than or equal to one just by the order properties for rationals. Uh, this implies that a inverse, this, sorry, the, the sequence a inverse and going from, sorry, this should be a n inverse. Let me fix this. Oops. Why is this not writing? I don't know, this is not working. I'll, I'll have to fix it later on. Um, this But this should be a n inverse, uh, sub n inverse, not a inverse. Uh, that's a Cauchy sequence by lemma 5.3.15 and is positively bounded away from zero. Therefore, x inverse equals lim a n inverse is a positive real number. Okay, that's the first part that proves that the uh, x inverse is a positive, uh, is a positive number if x is a positive number. Right, and then next, let x, y be positive real numbers. Assume for the sake of contradiction that x inverse is greater than or equal to y inverse. Then by proposition 5.4.7, one is equal to x times x inverse is greater than or equal to x, y inverse, uh, which is greater than uh, y, y inverse, which is also equal to one. That implies one is greater than one, and that's a contradiction. Therefore, uh, the the reverse has to be true. X inverse has to be less than, uh, strictly less than Y inverse. So that's the proof of uh, 5.4.8. Right, we have another proposition right after it, uh, which is proposition 5.4.9. So let, let's assume that we have a, a Cauchy sequence of non-negative rational numbers, then limit AN is a non-negative real number. All right, so here, notice non-negative we're not talking about positive uh, uh you know sequence of positive rational numbers we're talking about non-negative rational numbers so some of the, some or, or maybe even all of them could be zero as well okay so here's uh my proof assume limit a n is negative for the sake of contradiction then there's a cauchy sequence b n that is negatively bounded away from zero then there's some negative c in the rationals uh, negative c less than zero such that b n is less than or equal to negative c for all n greater than or equal to one again just using the definition of negative number uh since b n and a n are 
equivalent Cauchy sequences for any epsilon greater than zero. There's an N, a capital N and N such that the distance between BN and AN is less than or equal to epsilon for all N greater than or equal to capital N. In particular, there's N prime in the natural numbers such that the distance between BN minus AN is less than or equal to C over two for all N greater than or equal to N prime. Then negative C over two is less than or equal to BN minus AN less than or equal to C over two. That implies that an is minus c over 2 is less than or equal to bn. And remember, all the bn are, are bounded above by negative c. So bn is less than or equal to negative c for all n greater than or equal to 1. Uh, but that implies that an is less than or equal to negative c over 2, which contradicts that an all the ans are greater than or equal to 0 for all n greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, uh, the two sequences an of ans and bns are not equivalent Cauchy sequences, which contradicts the fact that we assumed that the, the numbers were the same thing. Therefore, limit an must be not negative, and that's the proof. Right, we get some corollaries that follow directly. Um, corollary 5, 4, 10, let an and bn be Cauchy sequences of rationals such that an is greater than or equal to bn for all n greater than or equal to 1. Then limit an is uh, greater than or equal to limit bn. And here's my proof. Since an is greater than or equal to bn for all n greater than or equal to 1, then the difference between those two are greater than or equal to 0 for all n greater than or equal to 1, uh, specifically in that order, I should say, right, uh, an minus bn. Um, therefore, an minus bn and going from 1 to infinity is a Cauchy sequence of non-negative rationals. Therefore, the limit of a the sequence of an minus bn uh, is equal to the limit an minus limit bn which is greater than or equal to zero by proposition 5.4.9, which is the previous one that we just did, uh, which imp implies that limit an is greater than or equal to limit bn, and that's the proof. Okay, Tao has a, a little remark here after this. Uh, five, he labels it remark 5.4.11. Notice that the above corollary does not work if greater than or equal is re replaced by greater than. And he gives an example to just to illustrate, uh, you know, how things can go wrong. And if you do that, one plus n, one over sorry, one plus one over n is obviously greater than one minus one over n for all n greater than or equal to one. But the limit as a uh, 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 sorry, the limit of one plus one over n as n goes to infinity is equal to the limit of one minus one over n as n goes to infinity. Um, so that you know it's not not strictly greater than there it ends up being equal here. So things can go wrong if you replace greater than or equal with um, with just greater than. You need the greater than or equal. Right. Uh, he also gives a, a definition. Notice I didn't number it here because he sort of just says this in passing. He says, let X, Y be real numbers. So the distance between X and Y is defined to be in the way that we would assume it would be defined. It's the absolute value of X minus Y. <clears throat> and he also says uh, in passing here, so I just wrote it as a note, proposition 4.3.3 and 4.3.7 hold not only for the rationals, but also for the reals. The proofs are identical since the real numbers uh, obey all the laws of algebra and order that the rationals do. So those things follow with proofs, you know, almost identical to, to the ones for rationals. Um, so he doesn't ask, well, I don't know, maybe he'll ask us to, to prove that in the, the exercise set. I haven't actually looked at the exercise set yet, but um, he's, he just says this without asking why or anything, so I didn't prove it or, or whatever. Anyway, uh, next proposition, 5.4.12, bounding of reals by rationals. So let X be a positive real number. Then there exists a positive rational number Q such that Q is less than or equal to X. And there exists a positive integer N such that X is less than or equal to N. And here's my proof. Let x equal limit a n be a positive real number. Then a n is it, the sequence of a n's is a Cauchy sequence bounded away from zero. Furthermore, a n is bounded by some positive rational number m, right? Because it's uh, a Cauchy sequence and it's uh, a positive number. So then there's a positive rational c greater than zero such that c less than or equal to a n less than or equal to m for all n greater than or, or equal to one. Moreover, there's an integer at capital N such that m is less than or equal to n, or, sorry, m is less than e or equal to capital N by proposition 4.4.1. Uh, let me just remind you of what that Oh, no, I didn't bring up 4.4. Sorry, you you could just look back in the video for 4.4. I, I forgot to bring up the notes for that. But anyway, um, and uh, 
zero is less than C is less than or equal to A N is less than or equal to M is less than or equal to capital N, which implies that capital N is positive. Therefore, C less than or equal to X less than or equal to N by corollary 5.4.10. Right, and then um, from that follows the Archimedean property, which is important. Let x be a real number and let epsilon be a positive real number. Then there exists a positive integer m such that m epsilon is greater than x. Right, so proof, um, let x less than or equal to zero, then m equals epsilon equals one works. So therefore, we what we have to really wor work on is when x is a positive number. So uh, then for epsilon greater than zero, x over epsilon is a positive number, a positive real number, which implies there is a capital N in the natural numbers minus zero, such that x over epsilon less than equal to capital N by corollary 5.4.12, uh, and then taking capital M to be equal to capital N plus one, we have what we want, X over epsilon less than you equal to capital N less than M, which implies that X is less than capital M epsilon. All right, so that shows that the uh, the real numbers are an Archimedean field. Um, we haven't proved the field theorems for the real numbers yet, uh, but it is, so. Uh, Proposition 5.4.14, given any two real numbers, x less than y, we can find a rational number q such that x less than q less than y. Uh, and again, this is one that uh, whose proof uh, Tal leaves for the reader to do in the exercise set. So we'll, we'll see the, the proof for that in the next video. Um, okay, and that's, um, we're almost done here. He says uh, in a, a note, that we've now finished constructing the real numbers and shown that they have all the algebraic and order properties as the rationals. In the next few sections, we'll show that the reals can do more things than the rationals, which is why we want to work it with the real numbers. Uh, for example, taking square roots, um, right? Real, square roots of real numbers, uh, well, square roots of positive real numbers are real. And then finally, he ends with a remark here, 5.4.15. We have not addressed the fact that the real numbers can be expressed using the decimal system. Uh, but this is addressed in Appendix B. Uh, we will do Appendix B at some point uh, in the future. Uh, I want to, because, uh, you know, decimals, uh, let me stop the screen share for a second. The reason why I want to wait for um, the decimal representation of the real numbers is because, you know, the decimal representation involves series. So I want to wait till after we actually do some work with uh, series before looking at that. But we will do that once we do we do the section in tau on series. So that's uh, two sections, I think, for now. So we're going to go back to uh, Spivak once we fi finish um, uh, chapter five in tau, and we'll do the... the uh, real number construction there using Dedekind cuts instead of Cauchy sequences. And uh, then we'll we'll finish uh, up um, we'll finish up Spivak and then we'll come back to to Tau and uh, we'll continue with the rest of Tau. Okay. So anyway, that's that's like in the future. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video, which will be the the uh, solution set, uh, the solutions to the exercise set for this, this section, uh, which I'm hoping to maybe get posted tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to try and finish them up today so I can post them tomorrow. Uh, I do just so you, the, the fall semester started up. So my time is going to be more limited than it was uh, in the last few weeks. So, uh, you know, just bear with me. My schedule is going to be a little bit more tight. So I, there might be a little bit more time between videos uh, coming up, but they're going to come out. So uh, anyway, I'm rambling now. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.